Welcome back to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. This is Project Independence and You. I'm your host, John Ryan. My co-host today is Otto Lose. Still awake, John. Still awake because we can see you. You know, when you go for that nap, we can catch you. You're and, good at motivating me. Uh, but now we're in the middle of the Christina Lou program, uh, Christina Lou show. And we will talk about some of the stuff that's going on around the town. But at the break, uh, Christina was talking about Jay's birthday coming up. Uh, and Jay's, in case you don't know who Jay is, Jay is her mooch. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I It's her mooch. And uh, so what's going on for his birthday? Yeah. So, you know, listen, on this show, we like to talk about ways of kind of swing, taking a negative and turning it into a positive as best as possible and as safely as possible. I, you know, I think it's important to add. Um, so my husband's birthday is coming up next week. It's also, it's the day after John, your fabulous host's birthday. Um, so, but this weekend we are going to be inviting a couple of friends over all outdoors. I've been heavy monitoring the weather and I'm happy to see, you know, a sun, you know, my feet are good Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. I, I see weekend. a sun now because that was stressing me out because, you know, if it rained, it would have really messed up the whole thing. The plan I'm doing is the theme for this, you know, because I like to come up with a creative thing each year for his birthday is an adult day camp. So it'll be during the day and I bought different things that you would see at a camp, right? Because my husband loves outdoor things. Um, so what I actually, you know, I have my heavy research, I found um, an archery set, but it's suction cup archery. So we won't be damaging, you know, the neighbor's property or my, my beautiful fence. So it's this beautiful set and it's, you know, for adults. They also have, which is very big, you know, me and my friends did, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, we went to Brooklyn and did axe throwing, which is all the trend now. Um, so I actually found online, uh, it's like a foam axe throwing thing that goes into this peg. So that's, you know, everything looks like, you know, it's, it's but it's all <laughs> kid friendly and, and safe. Um, and then I have darts, you know, a magnetic dart board, the girls, um, all my friends, I, I figured, found an easy craft. So we'll do arts and crafts, which are toilet paper pumpkins. So I'll, I'll share a, a, a picture of that. So they'll go home with that. And then of course, we're gonna have, uh, my husband built a, a teepee in the backyard, um, which he's really excited that he now knows. So if anyone know, if, if, if things really get bad, Jay knows how to build a teepee. So we are, we're pretty solid with that now. You no, know, I saw that teepee being built. Yes, it, I was so impressed. I was blown. We thought it was gonna be a very difficult task. You know, it was kind of like a team building, you know, exercise. And I was like, I don't even know how the heck we're gonna do it. He was doing all this research, watching it. And this just shows you can learn a lot from YouTube. Um, so he, we got the materials on Amazon and it was very low cost and he whipped it together and I'm, I'm really very <laughs> quite impressed with it. And we're going to have, you know, outdoors. I, I got, um, you know, some out sandwiches and, you know, we're going to do a campfire with s'mores. So it's all these little tiny things and it's all going to be, you know, outdoors, um, which is, is really, really nice. And, and it, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a fun, safe activity, you know, loaded with, I have my little hand sanitizer stations and, and wipes, you know, so everyone could wipe down the, the, the bow and arrow after they, they use it or whatnot. So it should be very fun. And of course, I'll, you'll all see my party favor bar because everyone has to go home with, you know, a favor bag at the end of the day. So. You're going to have a lot more party stuff to put in your warehouse. Well, you know, luckily <laughs> I have, and this is what I have to say, I have so much stuff that I reuse, you know, because all my containers and platters are all things that really, you know, it was very, I actually didn't have to buy anything um, too much extra besides the safe games, but you know, it's, it's going to be a nice time. And like I said, to enjoy the outdoors is something we're really making a point of doing even more so um, than normal. So I'm, I'm glad. I'm really glad. That's great. And, Otto, we'll have to segue into because we were building. No, wait, before, we, before we get to Otto, one more thing from the Lou family is that uh, that new bike you have, not bike. Oh, well, his friend. ATV, yes, his Jay purchased in ATV. Because, um, like I said, during this time, you know, we're comfortable, and like I said, everyone has their own comfortable level. Jay and myself are comfortable. Just gonna hold on one second, Christina. Yeah. Dan just sent up. I don't know if you see us. Mm -hmm. I miss the in-studio parties. Oh, Christina, I know. Every event, Christina used to set us up 
and have all the goodies. Well, listen, guys, what we do have to look forward to is when this is all over, there's going to be so much pent up. It's just going to really be quite the explosion. Dan, will the whole room will be covered in confetti. Which I know he misses having that studio sprinkled in confetti when I left. So watch out, world. It will be there. But, um, you know, yes, so Jay got, he, for a while, he's been doing research and he wanted to get this ATV um, so we can go to trails out east and upstate. And our friends are interested in it because, like I said, we're just trying to find kind of fun activities to do. So he bought it. Um, you know, and it, it's adorable because it just shows you that, you know, boys never grow up. Um, so all of his friends were, That's oh true. My God, this is so cool. You know, so everyone, you know, it, it, we were hysterically laughing. It was like, he got the cool toy, you know, out of his friends. And, um, now everybody, all the wives probably want to kill us because now all the husbands want to purchase one. Uh, so, but it's nice. Like I said, you have to find whatever it is, you know, and I, I just, I can't get out of my head to that whole article we discussed you know about all walking and you know being outside and and really just taking a moment and breathing in the beautifulness around you instead of you know all the stresses um that that are in your life so we're just trying to find little things you know to keep us occupied and get fresh air and, and do as a, a couple you know i'm lucky to say me and jay uh, enjoy each other's company so I, I don't mind riding on the back of it you know it's quite a that's my thing i was like all right you know you do what you need to do I'll hang out back here <laughs> and it, it should be nice. But I also want to segue into Otto's had, Otto, a, all right. had an awesome family thing, you know, that he was planning for quite a long time. And it was just this past Saturday, uh, Sunday. So tell us about it, Otto. Well, like you said, we try to adapt. Normally I go once a year to a jet game with about 10 family members. It's kind of a tradition uh, uh, as bad as they are. So this past Sunday, we had our virtual uh, jet day, which meant we tailgated at 1130 in the driveway <laughs> and in my garage uh, with a tent that I put up in the driveway. And I had a projector and a screen and we streamed the game onto the screen. And uh, there were a fair number of family members all socially mm -hmm. taking care of themselves. And, uh, but we started out having uh, the tailgating like we were at a game, uh, which was great. Uh, one little add on, by the way, there's a new thing that uh, we found this Philly pretzel where you get these pretzel dogs, you get a tray of them and they were really great uh, as a, as a side line. One like of the it. items, you know, we had food and then we had some decorations and we had jet lights and everybody wears jet shirts and stuff. And uh, anyhow, the game was terrible, uh, and it didn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> the Jets are bad. And, uh, but we had our halftime parade with pots and pans and whatever around the house. I no. told everybody that we were going to be the halftime entertainment. And uh, that one of the disappointing things is I said we were going to have flyby, you know, like at a lot of the football games, they had these planes flying by. And I have enough planes flying overhead usually because of Kennedy Airport or LaGuardia and I said we're going to have a flyby and there was not one plane that came by that day I don't know why but not one plane so the flight pattern changed even though I called all the airlines and That's told some them nerve. <laughs> some nerve. but it was memorable we had a good time and I, Christine I know was on Facebook and saw some of the pictures they were uh, wonderful it, pictures it also oh, was really have to look. Okay. Uh, yeah. one of my grandsons and my birthday were a couple of days apart and uh, my six-year-old grandson Karen and uh, we kind of jointly had a cake for him and me at the same time and uh, you know it was a good it was a memorable experience and we made uh, made something out of, as they say made lemonade out of uh, you know bad know. stuff no and that's and what you had you a know, good time it's in it's so important and first of all i just have to do say that one of my my most favorite picture that i will admit i screenshot and i sent it to jay and my mom because i said this is just a reminder of couple goals and people that i love there was a picture of otto and his beautiful wife bunny otto sitting on bunny's lap 
Um, and it's just a candid, adorable photo. Um, and that just showed their compatibility. And well, I had my kazoo helmet on. Yes, and that's what I wanted to segue. And I <laughs> believed it was a kazoo helmet because I, I saw the piece. I said, I, th- I wasn't sure if it was that or, you know, one of those helmets well, that funnel fear into your and, mouth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure. <laughs> But it's I saw, an, and then I saw the kazoo, and I said, I think that might have been what Otto chose as his noise-producing instrument. You know, for well, the it's hand-touch. a kazoo helmet that has a speaker. It's a batting helmet, basically, that has a speaker on top of it. And <laughs> I did, I got this thing from somebody many years ago, and it uh, you flip a switch, and then it becomes like a microphone, and you can. Talk I, I feel set. like I might need it. You know, I, I feel like that's something that might be needed. <laughs> well, we went at one time. There was serious look at selling this stuff. Uh, like there were kazoo bands, believe it or not. Uh, not many of them, but there's some kazoo bands out there. And we figured, well, we got a big market with the kazoo bands, but uh, it didn't fly. So that was the end of it. Well, but we it had a good like- time anyhow. <laughs> It really did, you know, and that's just something, you know, what I think is amazing because, you know, that is a tradition in Otto's family for years. And the fact that he just, you know, you had to adapt and he revamped it and had a great time. So kudos to you, Otto. And I loved it. I was, uh, I was anxiously awaiting the photos. Yeah, it's on Facebook, Otto? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see it. I mean, not that I, I just scroll. So whoever I happen to see, I see, I have to put your name in. Yeah, There's that. a video of the parade, too. This is Project Independence in You. I'm your host, John Ryan, and my co-host is Otto Lowe's. Um, And we were just talking about Otto Lowe's, but in reference to the Jet Game. And prior to that, we were talking with Christina, who is the producer and also the star of the Christina Lou Show, in reference to what she's doing for Jay. Um, oh, this birthday. And now I got your picture, Otto. I <laughs> And bunny. <laughs> yeah, I like how you're incorporating using technology. You know, it just shows you how and fast. I see your Zoom hat, not Zoom hat, your kazoo hat. It's like a speaker <laughs> on the top there. Oh, that's too bad I can't know how to get it onto this thing because. We'll have to talk to Dan about oh, getting it in. This way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. But, um, but any, anyway, just to go back, well, we'll go back to anything we'll talk about, but. That is so important because in the middle of COVID, uh, Christina's having a party um, and, and Otto had something socially conscious. You, know, you can't be separated forever and ever, but at the same time, you got to know who's coming to your house. You have to of know course, that we're responsible people in the first place. I mean, because COVID is just popping up all over. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really kicking up big time. Um, and whatever, I'm just saying. No, and I also want to say, you know, I don't know if I had mentioned it last week, but I was on an advisory committee meeting um, for, I think it was the, I forgot which region we were talking about. But what was so nice was that one of the women in there was saying, you know, she has her group of friends and they always now, each week they have a different theme via Zoom, you know, where they uh, either watch Netflix together because you could have these Netflix watch parties. So at the same time, you know, I could be watching a show with you and then you could discuss it. They were also doing a night where they would do crafts, you know, so there's so it's really, it's so endless what you can do, you know, and that's for people that are may not be comfortable, you know, of an in-person thing. Like I said, there's, there's different comfortabilities to this whole thing. And it's really nice though, because it's like, you know, they sit there and say, we just, you know, or we just talk and see where it goes. And I think um, it's important because I, I am more concerned a lot of times about the effects of the mental health component of what this current society is, is, is doing for people. And I think it's important to take care of yourself. And like I said, it's very easy to get, you know, bogged down and, and sucked into this, to, to what everything that's going on right now and all the negative aspects of things. So I think that um, it'll make you feel better. And I encourage people to, you know, whether it's with your family, your friends, your neighbors, or if you just want to join a social group or whatever program, um, Project Independence has so many programs that they're offering. You know, there's a social discussion group that meets. There's a men's group um, that meets via Zoom. There's a World in Motion current events group that meets um, there's so many, and that's just, you know, the, the groups that are meeting. Um, and also, we're really excited for the last month or so, 
our caregiver support group uh, has started meeting via this platform, which is, is so, so important. And a topic that we're actually going to get into further on the radio program in December, um, because I think, you know, in general, caregivers kind of neglect themselves, you know, and, and don't really, it's always about the person they're caring for, and they're not even looking about taking care of their own uh, needs. So um, especially during this time, it's been very difficult because under normal circumstances, there might be some kind of respite program or an additional help that, that's coming in to help out the person you're caring for. And of course, that was pushed to a halt during this because of, you know, different guidelines and whatnot. So in December, we're actually going to have kind of a show that's geared towards the caregiver caregivers. And the first part is about Northwell North Shore University Hospital in Manhasset has now launched a beautiful caregiver resource center um, that I just, they, they contacted me the other day and we connected, I'm sending our information. So they're going to come on. There's a social worker there and a peer group uh, also is there. And then um, we're also going to have on someone from the Alzheimer's Association who is providing a chat for, you know, our Project Independence members are also going to come on the radio and do about the effects of caregivers in COVID and how to take care of yourself um, during this time. So it's really important. So I'm excited for that to come. Um, also, the last uh, fall stop program that everyone loves in North Hempstead, and you don't have to get out of your car. You know, you could get rid of whatever, you know, there's so many things that you've been collecting, you know, especially during this time, I'm sure. Um, is going to be Saturday and Sunday, October 17th and October 18th over at North Hempstead Beach Park. You can come from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and throw out whatever kind of stuff you have in your garage, including aerosols, household chemicals, pesticides, disinfectants, fertilizers, uh, batteries, TVs, oil-based paints. And there's a whole host of different things you can do. You could find out by calling at 311. But that's the last one um, of 2020. Uh, so definitely, I think people should. Christina. Uh, yes. Th there's no drugs, right? Am I right wrong? There are no drugs at that one, no. Um, but there was there was another program. If you call through in one, they can give that to you. And also, you can drop it off, obviously, at your um, local police department. 24 oh, okay. okay. So that's something you could always do regardless. Um, uh, also, which is really exciting, uh, that, that we're getting such a great response for this Zoom platform. I just think it, I love seeing, you know, I see the registrations, they come to me, myself and Paula Ewell, um, the deputy commissioner of our department. So just to see all these things come in. And I have to give a qu quick little segue. I re once the Pioneer newsletter actually hit, um, I get to directly see all the new members that are joining and all the, um, people signing up for programs of new names and stuff. And it was from the Pioneer. So it's really great to know that people out there are reading the Pioneer. Um, and if you're not receiving it and you're six year over in the town of North Hempstead, please call 311 or 869-6311. And if you still wanna get information about Project Independence, you might not live in the town, you could still call 311 and I can get you on our email newsletter, which is sent out monthly which has all of our programs and events um, and, and important information. So that's something that I think is great. And that number is growing. And obviously it's a lot easier to get out, you know, in, tons of information during that uh, kind of thing. So um, definitely. It is tremendous. There's no question about it. Um, and, and you're right, whether you live in the town or not, um, you, you, you get on that list because you, you, you may know somebody who lives in the town and say, listen, did you know that next Tuesday this is going on in your town? I, I, it doesn't cost anything. It's well, and it's, you know, there's a lot of um, people, you know, so listen, why we say this all the time, Project Independence is serving people 60 and onward, you know? So as we even talked about previously, um, you know, people who are 60, you know, my parents are 60 and still working, you know, it's, and it's, you don't look at them as seniors, you know? And so it's the bottom line is they are still caring, you know, plenty of people in their age bracket are caring for their own parents, you know? So they might just want to find out what kind of services Project Independence provides and, and whatnot. So um, call 311 or 869-6311 for any of this information um, because there's tons of information. 
Um, another chat that is getting such um, quite the buzz, I, and I have to have to look up how many because I constantly keep seeing reservations for this, is our latest technology for the Terrified program on how to sell on the internet. So that's going to be on Tuesday, October 27th. Um, Barbara Melman, who is our tech guru, is going to tell people just different apps or websites or ways to sell stuff via the internet. Um, and that's going to be from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So that is getting so much, so many people want to do that, which I think are great. You know, like everyone's, everyone's been home, everyone's been looking at stuff, trying to declutter. So what's the best way to do is to sell stuff. My cousin does it all the time. And I'm so impressed with some of the amount of money she'll get for, for things that she has, you know, in around the house. So um, definitely check that out. <clears throat> and I also think what is so, so important that I really encourage people to do also on Tuesday, October 27th at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. via Zoom, there's going to be a program called the importance of scheduling an inpatient doctor visit and the safety measures in place. This program is going to be provided through Northwell Health Geriatrics, who, you know, we do tons of programming with because we met with them and they were saying a lot of people due to fear of, you know, possibly being in a medical setting and contracting COVID have been neglecting their kind of routine doctor appointments, um, which is not good, you know, obviously, because there's so many preventative things that can go on. And, and even though everyone's scared about COVID, it's so important to take care of the rest of your health um, also. And there's so many safety measures in place. So this presentation is really going to be geared towards what to expect, you know, when you're going to the doctor and just to kind of ease people's fears and anxieties um, about that. So that, once again, I really encourage people to please check out is October 27th at 11 a.m., uh, via Zoom, you just call 311 and you'll get the Zoom link for that. You know, that's an important topic. I know a lot of people that go to the doctor, but then they don't tell the doctor when they get there what's wrong. Right. <laughs> you know, because they don't want to get bad news. But yeah. the bottom line is it's not a good idea. Yeah. You should be prepared with questions and tell them what's bothering you. <laughs> No, absolutely. And it's, it's just, um, it, it's very important to, um, to maintain, like I said, because that has become an increasing problem. I mean, I've seen it in the news, I've seen it firsthand at Project Independence, you know, people who, you know, was, or go to the heart doctor every six months or whatever it might be. And then because of COVID have said like, eh, like I'm not going to any doctor, you know, because I don't want to like be put in that setting, but they're really safe. You know, I've had to go in between this for some routine stuff and I felt totally safe in my doctor's office. You know, everyone has a mask, there's hands, there's, there's very serious protocols to ensure safety. So um, check. I, I know you just said something very important. I don't know if either one of you guys used to or did watch House, that doctor yes. on TV. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. We wound up watching it, Steph and I, during the pandemic, and we liked it. But the, the significant thing about it is you wind up going to a doctor. And in the middle of house, all of a sudden he says, what's wrong with you, you idiot? You didn't tell me that. Yeah. You're right, Otto. You got to make the list because something that might have been insignificant to you was very important with your diagnosis. Absolutely. And therefore, bring, let him turn around and say, that means nothing. That's stupid. Don't worry about it. Versus like, what? I didn't know that. And uh, it is very important. I mean, you, you, you don't know... <laughs> what's impacting your health. So let the professional figure it out for you. You don't do that with anything else in your life. You take pictures for everything. You're trying on clothes. You're doing everything. You know, you tell everybody everything. <laughs> I know, it's so true. You tell them nothing. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't think you should be afraid to say to the doctor, well, maybe what if we did this or whatever? You know, maybe we tried a different medication or whatever. I, you, you, you should be able to have a conversation with the doctor and and voice your feelings about it and frankly maybe you come up with an idea you know the doctors are all human beings they they they're just human beings like we are and they don't necessarily have all the answers all the time no the collaboration conversation is, is so so important um, yeah um also i want to encourage people that our exercise program is so amazing it's all on north hempstead tv now it's also on north hempstead tv um online as well. There's fitness, tai chi, yoga, and dance. 
Um, you could check all of that out. A lot of them are airing at the times that they normally would be happening in person. So they're so wonderful. Uh, you can call through on one to get the specifics as to the schedule and whatnot. So please do that. We're gonna get ready to take a break and actually just to throw in real quick, I've seen the Qigong guy, <laughs> mm -hmm. Christina, on, on doing his program, but I agree with you. It's so good for seniors, they're on the TV, you just turn it on and do your program. Um, but we're being very fortunate through this whole pandemic, uh, in my mind, we're just bringing top shelf um, programming each week. And I know there's more coming up through, where are we? Oh, through November and December. You probably have January booked, Christina, but I have no idea yet. <laughs> but yes, maybe we're, we're fully booked December. Everyone should expect the uh, schedules being hopefully sent out later today when I finalize all the details on everything. But um, yeah, it's really great. It's such great information. And, you know, it's each week just to, to really learn something. And I think we're doing such a service for not only the seniors in the town, but people that care for seniors. And, um, you know, I want to mention uh, last week we had touched upon it. So I'll be on air. I think it happened. I had been monitoring our um, SR system, our three one one call center, where you know all of our requests come in, and we got our fifteen thousandth member. It's actually higher than that now. Wow, I had no idea. Cool. But it was our official, you know, registration. So um, I was working with communications. We want to do like a little special thing. So this morning, actually, I was on the phone um, with the uh, the couple that had registered, and it was just such a wonderful conversation. Um, because they're actually on the younger end of, you know, our, our senior spectrum and they don't even necessarily consider themselves seniors, you know, the husband was saying and, and, but it was so great. And it was our message that we're always trying to promote. So when you get that call, you just feel really validated because she, she, she said she saw it in the pioneer and she's been following the pioneer for years, um, which of course made me feel happy that someone was saying that. And um, she said, you know, it's just, she was explaining to her husband, like, even if you're not considering yourself a senior or necessarily need all these services, like we're residents of the town. So why not, you know, be educated and, and learn about all these things. So when the time comes that we do, we know she's like, I've lived in North Hempstead my whole life. So it's just, and it was just so wonderful to hear because that's all we're ever preaching at Project Independence is, you know, it's, it's a free thing to join. You're a resident of North Hempstead. You could use one service. You could use no service. You could use all the services. Um, and it's all about preparing because I think, you know, nobody wants to be in the emergency where you really need something and you're scrambling, trying to find out information. So, you know, knowing ahead of time, all these wonderful services, you know, cause, and then we were talking about the transportation program even, and so, you know, we still drive, but there's procedures that go on, whether you're going to an eye doctor and you're getting drops in your eye and you can't drive after. So that's, you know, using the transportation program is a wonderful choice for that, you know, and I want to just segue into that the transportation program until the end of the year has been approved to remain cashless um, completely. Wow. So that means medical is free and food shopping is free, um, including tips. So I think that's really important. So that is the supervisor and the town board approved that throughout the end of the year, um, which is wonderful. So call three on one if you need a ride for that, because that's great. So, but like, you know, it was just very, um, I think it's wonderful um, in Project Independence, you know, that we are offering so many things like I was explaining to, you know, the seniors that I was talking to, you know, there's, there's volunteer opportunities for people that, you know, might, you know, be on the younger and the exercise program has been a wonderful way of getting the younger senior to participate the radio program, you know, different educational chats that we're doing so um, it's important. We want to have something for everyone. So it was really good to hear from someone um, that, that, that was, and she's still working. She's a nurse. It was just really a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And I was like, Oh, this is the, the dial really fell wonderfully on. And they were funny too. Cause they asked me if they want a trip to Hawaii because they were the 15,000th <laughs> member. And I said, listen, we're in a pandemic. We'll try they, to work they on They want a, a virtual trip to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I you, like that, Otto. That's what I should have said. Go on YouTube. <laughs> That's what I, I, I should have said, but um, it was really just great. And I also want to remind people to please sign up for our virtual project independence advisory committees. They meet monthly um, and it's really a great way to get a feel for what's happening, what's going on. Um, each advisory committee, there's usually a wonderful speaker. So there's so much to offer. 
Um, and, and if you want to participate right now, they're all via Zoom and you can even call in, you know, if you don't have a computer. So you could still be a part of it just via the telephone. So call 311 or 869-6311 for any of that information. Um, next week, we actually have um, a repeat show. Um, so that uh, you should check out. We're going to have on uh, the wonderful uh, segment we had with Barry Klitzberg uh, to remind people about Medicare 2021 and the open enrollment process. And also Dr. Coley um, from Northwell Health and her topic on immunizations, because that's also really important. So, And then we'll be back on October 30th with Robert Zimmerman, who is um, a political analyst and advocate who will be discussing voting procedures uh, during COVID-19. So that should be wonderful. And then we'll have to talk a little bit about Halloween prep, you know, too, because it's going to be the day before <laughs> Halloween. Um, but, um, and speaking of that, I just have to quickly mention, because the fabulous Kate Beckman, who uh, was with the Poor Washington Play Troupe and a friend of the show, uh, we had her on numerous times, just reached out to me last week, um, because she's going to be offering a program through the Poor Washington Play Troupe, uh, which is really, really exciting and should be a fun kind of light thing. She's doing it through the Rockville Center Public Library, but also the Port Washington Public Library um, via Zoom. And she's going to be doing, uh, reading different Halloween stories. Uh, and it's gonna be a musical program, but with a Halloween theme um, and different readings. And um, ever, anyone knows Kate, it's probably gonna be so wonderful and, um, and fun. And she said it's actually, which I have to read word for word because this is my favorite part of the email. It said, P.S., the program is best suited for older witches and warlocks, not for younger ghosts and go goblins. <laughs> so <laughs> I loved it. I think uh, if you're interested in that, you can call um, the uh, Poor Washington Library. You can check online or call 311 and we can uh, get you connected. Back to Halloween for a second, all right? Um, uh, clearly this year will be a different Halloween. Mm -hmm. What's, what's the feeling as far as trick-or-treat type stuff goes? Well, did you see what I created at my house? Um, the candy shoot? Yeah, the shoot. My, yeah. my husband and I did. Um, so that was our way. Um, so a lot of our friends are going to bring their kids because they're nervous, you know. And it's, it's sad because it's very hard to explain to children, you know, who look forward to this, the whole logistics of it. I think there are ways I've seen, you know, so many shows of doing things safely, whether you're putting out the bowl, you know, which people kind of do a lot of times anyway, and kids, you know, I also realized, and in my own neighborhood, maybe, and I'm just speaking from experience, I find all the kids to be so respectful of space, even before this. So there's always like this, you know, there's your little group of, of people, you know, if your brother and sister come up and they'll do, and then they leave and then the next thing comes. Um, so I think there are ways. And like I said, my husband and I created our elaborate candy shoot, which is, you know, from all household kind of things, we created this tube um, on a ladder. Uh, of course, we decorate it to make it look festive and it's propped up on a bench and we are, it's more than six feet away from the person who would get it. And we're going to drop the candy down there and they could put their bag right under the little tube and walk away. And, you know, it's, um, it's keeping in the spirit of things, you know, but safely, because I was like, there was no way I was going to say, and like I said, we might get one kid, we might get no kids, but you know, I think, I, I don't think you're going to get that many. I mean, no, I don't think so, but I, I think there's children, for the people I wouldn't let anybody go out in the street. I wouldn't, let, I wouldn't bring anything into my house that somebody else touched. I, yeah, I, don't, like I, said, I, I think it's, um, it's also like their comfortability. Listen, I mean, I get takeout food plenty of time. So it's the same concept. I go to the grocery store. I'm not sitting there wiping down anything anymore. You know, so like I said, it's, it's really kind of the comfortability. You know, I know in my, on my block, at least, you know, there are, there are kids that are, are happy. You know, the it made the neighbors feel kind of comfortable. Right. They could just walk down the street and boom here, you know, we're all decorated. So it's like, here you go. You know, like you got your crescendo of things. So like I said, you just have to kind of, well, everyone's comfortability level is always going to be different. And I know a lot of my friends, I mean, they're here and they come here anyway, you know, we're going to bring their kids by and stuff. So I kind of lean in John's direction. I don't think there's going to be that many kids. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. But you know, like I said, there probably are going to be, I, like I said, there are going to be people who are going to go to the house that you feel comfortable and safe knowing certain things. So 
Um, we'll see. To be determined. You know, that's all you I can do. Told Steph, what I'm going to do is just make bags. I go to the dollar store, but just for my kids. Yeah. For my yeah. grandchildren. Yeah, and exactly. And I think that one. They're not getting candy, but the nine-year-old, I'll give him enough candy that it would have been all the candy he would have gathered if exactly. he Exactly. And I think that's exactly what's going to be going on is there's, you know, and there's really great online, I've been saying too, fun things to do with your kids, whether it's little crafts. Um, you know, like I said, my nieces are going to come by my three nieces and I'm going to set up the outdoor back table, you know, cause I do it outside and have like little craft for them and right. whatnot. There's, there's these really cute little kits where you can decorate your own Halloween um, cookies, you know, that are in supermarkets. There's so many little things and little household crafts that don't cost a lot of money um, that you could still make Halloween. Cause listen, it's something I know since I was a little girl that I looked forward to. So it doesn't have to be like, it's all about adapting, right? You can watch it, make a Halloween movie night. I mean, there's yeah, so many- We don't have too much time left. Mm -hmm. Tell me one holiday you haven't looked forward to in your I life. Know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But Halloween is real up there. I'll, it's one of my, um, you know, my favorite things because I just remember from as far back as I can remember, planning my costume was always quite the event, you know? So I told my mom, she created this monster, you know, it was always such a thing. And I have to say my costume somehow, the following year became like, I would do all this creative stuff and then it was a packaged costume. So I think someone's watching me, you know, <laughs> I just want to put it out there. <laughs> Hallmark or somebody was taking there's, pictures of it. There's something, uh, there's something I, I, going on. Okay, if it's good enough for Christina, we're bringing it out to America. That's right. Believe it or not, we're out of time. That's our show for today. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. As Christina said, next week is a repeat, but a great show. You've been listening to Senior Talk Radio here on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. Enjoy the weekend and be safe.